Hey, hey everyone, this is Tara Lynn. I am the artist behind Paint, Rinse, Repeat, and I'm excited to paint licorice tulips with you this evening. Um, I know for many of you, for a lot of my supporters, um, you guys were so grace giving um, when I was sick that evening. So thank you so much for having um, love and patience with me. Uh, it's been a really rough, totally was struggling with that. Still not 100%, but very excited to get back to painting. Um, so before we begin, I will go over supplies here. Um, we are going to need something to paint on. So you've got canvas. Um, it says 12 by 12 outline provided, but actually you are given a variety of sizes to choose from for this painting. And you really can take it and change the orientation, change the size, whatever you want to do with this one. Um, as far as paint colors go, we've got light pink, phthalo green, orange, white, bright red, deep yellow, and black. Anytime we're creating uh, with botanicals, there's natural variation. So don't worry too much about having the exact color. You can make these tulips in any beautiful colors of pink and black and white. Um, with this comes the outline. So um, here's what the outline looks like. You would print it out and tape it together and then transfer it with your favorite transfer method onto your canvas. So I've got that. Um, if you have not done so, now would be a great time to pause and get your design transferred. Um, and again, we're working with botanicals, so there's lots of natural variation. Don't worry too much about this outline. Um, the shapes can, you know, vary in size a little bit and in shape and, you know, flowers lose petals and get new buds and all of those things. So feel free to change this up however you'd like to. We're creating with acrylics today, so I've got water, I've got paper towels, a palette to put my paint on, um, or a plate is fine. I often keep a heat gun or hair dryer, which is optional, but it can speed along the drying process. Um, and really, that's it. We just need your desire to create something fun today, and then we will get started. take lots of water breaks today since I have not been feeling well. The first thing we're going to do here is start with the background. And um, we're going to just layer some nice shades of pink. I'm going to keep the pink mostly at the bottom um, just so it's not competing with a lot of the blooms. And then up at the top we've got kind of a, a delicious creamy um, yellowy orange up there. Um, so I've got my design transferred and then I go over it with Sharpie marker. I do that so that on camera here you can see it really well. Um, but feel free to do that if you want to make sure your lines are visible up through the layers. Um, that can be a handy trick to help you if you really need those outlines. So what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to dip right into my light pink here and I'm just going to Throw some of that right on the canvas, kind of filling in these outline areas. I'm going to blend on the canvas today a lot of these colors. I'm going to add a little bit on the right and a little bit on the left. And then I'm just going to start blending into white and then blending a little bit of yellow into that white. Now I want this to say really light yellow here at the bottom. And I didn't clean my brush, so some of this might even turn a little bit creamsicle-like, just really light and pretty. And what I want to happen is as we go up, we are gonna add more of that creamsicle. I call it a creamsicle. It's kind of just like a yellowy pinkish salmon-y orange. <laughs> I don't even know. It's just, it's just a real pretty color. So here on the sides we've got this 
pink that kind of blends into this yellow. And so I'm going to dip into white and pink and yellow all at once and just kind of blend that up here. Heavier with the yellow up in the corner. And of course, this is our background color. So you can change this and kind of modify it however you want to. This does not have to be exactly the same. We're just kind of setting the stage here. And I'm just kind of blending it around. It's okay at this point if we're going over those flowers. We just want to make sure we get all of the background covered in some way. So whatever beautiful blend of colors you decide to do. And up here at the top on my original, I just had a little more of that orange in there. So you can blend that in if you want to. But really, it's just a nice, delicate background. Um, and the fun thing about just being able to go over these lines is you really can get a good blend in there. So just make sure all your outline spaces are covered. That's really the only requirement for this background. We're going to build up um, and add layers of these tulips, and it's going to hide all of those outlines and all of that paint that has gone over the edges. So you can go crazy with the background, have some fun with it. There's no right or wrong. Um, if blending stresses you out, you can certainly choose one color for the background that you like. All right, I am done with my big fat brush. I'm gonna pop that in the water. Most of the line work that I'm gonna to do today, we're doing with a, a medium flat brush. I'm working about 12 by 16 size, so I've got this brush here. If you're working larger, you might be closer to a three quarter inch or, or a one inch brush. Um, we want brush strokes in this painting, so do not be afraid of brush strokes today, okay? Um, other than that, there's no rules. Just have fun with this. This is what I like to call an impressionist painting. Um, impressionists were very focused on um, making people uh, look at art in a different way. It wasn't meant to be hyper realistic, um, it was meant to um evoke the feeling of um for example tulips um so that's what we're going for it's it's fun it's kind of got big bold brush strokes and um don't focus too much on the details all right uh we're gonna start with uh, the black tulips um, only because in my sample those were farther back and so um, we're just going to start with black on our brush. And I'm going to start with the rightmost tulip here. And I'm going to go right over those ed edge lines. So I'm going to do this first petal here. I'm going to work petal by petal. That helps me keep my bearings so I don't lose that shape that I put on there. So I'm going to fill this in with black. I'm going to wipe off my brush, but I'm not going to wash it. I'm going to dip into some white. And on this tulip, we've got 
some lightness going on. So I'm just going to blend right on the tulip here. You can see that black overtakes that white pretty easily. But we've got a lighter shade of gray in there. Then I can dip into the black again and start pulling more and more of this. Each time kind of wiping off my brush and layering up that color. Now, you can't over blend or you're going to lose the white. If I keep mixing this in, the black is going to overtake that color and it's just going to end up with a deep dark gray. I want to see some of that light on there, so I'm going to leave that be. I want those brush strokes in that part of the painting. All right, so I've got another little part of the tulip that pops up here. And because of the size and orientation I've chosen, this one goes off the page. I'm going to throw some black in there. There's not a whole lot of color variation, so I'll just mix in some white and be done with that. Then we've got one more petal. I'm going to start by filling it in with the black. And then we're going to do the same process. I'm just going to kind of pull in some white here following the shape of that petal. Initially kind of blending that in. And then layering upwards. And each time I layer upwards, I just blend a little less. And you can just kind of play with it until you're happy with the way that tulip looks. All right, the second black tulip is over here. We're gonna go through the same process. So I'm gonna start with the less leftmost petal on this guy. And this petal is just pretty much completely black. If there's any white on this brush, I'll let it play around in there, but I'm not going to add any white. This is the darkest petal we've got there. The next petal I'm going to do, I'm going to skip a petal and I'm going to do this one here because it's the farther most, the next farthest back petal. And really there's no right or wrong order, but this is just the easiest way I feel like there is to tackle it. So I'm going to fill that in with black. Now this petal kind of has a little lip at the top, so I'm going to avoid that um, for now. And I'm going to kind of just pull some of this white in and down through the center, making a light gray. And then just kind of layering that upwards. I'm going to wipe off my brush and go right into the next petal on the right side here. With my layer of black. And y'all, it's pretty much the same thing. We are kind of touching in some gray, touching in some white, blending right here on the canvas. 
and just get playful with it. Put some on there and just kind of smush it around. Have a have a good time with the paint. This is a very playful type painting. And then we've got the last petal here. Same process. Put the petal on there and then we just kind of follow that petal shape with shades of gray. And one last touch that you're going to see me do here. So on my paper towel where I'm kind of wiping this off, I've got a lot of this gray here. And so uh, I am going to, because black is a very difficult color to work with. We rarely see pure black. Um, and in nature, these tulips would not be pure black. I'm going to come through and I'm just going to highlight with some of that gray kind of the shape in between these tulips and you're gonna see here it's pretty subtle on camera it's pretty subtle to the eye too but I'm just gonna help these shapes differentiate each other from one another with just the darkest gray that I've got here on my palette now um, you can see vaguely there's a little line. That helps our eye. It just helps our eye a little bit. And so anywhere you feel like you just need a little bit of that slightly lighter pop. All right, we do have one more black tulip and this one is a dual color tulip. So up top, we've got some um, creamy color and down at the bottom, we've got some black. We're gonna do that cream color first and then we're gonna get into the, um, the black. So what I'm gonna do is clean off this brush because right now I do not want that black. I'm going to move that dirty paper towel out of the way. All right, so usually, typically, when we're creating a creamy color, we want to have some brown um, or work with cream, a premixed cream on its own. Um, but we are using very little of that, so I'm just gonna kind of mix my own. Um, so green and red are opposite of each other on the color wheel, and so they will make kind of a nice neutral that we can then add white to. and kind of play up um, the cream colors. So if your cream reads to brown or to green, you can add a little red. If it leans to red, you can add a little green. Um, you can kind of play with these colors. I may add a little orange in there just to, to kind of get this neutral. Um, but this here is white, a hint of green, a hint of red. And I went a little orange in there just to, to kind of balance it out. All right. 
Um, so I'm going to put this color at the tips of my roses here. And if your neutral is a little different from mine, that's fine. If it reads more yellow, that's okay. If it reads more red, more orange, really, we're just coming up with kind of a neutral that we can kind of turn into a little bit of a shadow on this fluffy tulip we got going on back here. All right, so I'm just gonna lay some of this color down, maybe change it by adding a little bit of another paint color here and there. All right, I'm gonna wipe off that brush. Don't need to wash it because we're working with the same color. And then I'm gonna go right into the white and I'm gonna pull that down. Starting about halfway and pull that color down into the petal. And it can be kind of choppy where it breaks from the neutral into the white. That's how those tulips look. So it's not a, a blend so much as it is one color stops and another starts. And by doing this, we're not getting a pure white. This is not a pure white leaf or petal. We're pulling some of this neutral color down. And that's okay because just like black, we rarely have pure whites when we're dealing with color and shadows in the real world. All right, so that's how we are gonna kind of get some of that ripply effect going on up here. Don't over blend, leave that choppy. So you've got that neutral up top that kind of blends down into that white. I'm just gonna give it a little swizzle, a little swish, slight blend. Don't want that to be too heavy. feel like I lost a little bit of my shadow color up there, so. All right, I'm gonna let that white dry for just a minute. Now, if you've gone heavy with this, um, you might want to use your hair dryer. I've got a nice thin coat, so it will dry a little bit for me. Um, I'm going to pull uh, some white and some pink into this neutral color and just kind of make a very, very light pink. Now, that neutral base that we gave the top of that tool up, that serves as our kind of our shadow up there. But really what we want this tool up to reflect is kind of a light pink. So now we know where to pull in that lightest color up top there. So I created this really light pink. I mixed it right on top of that neutral because that will um, turn the brightness down on that pink just a little bit. So 
So I've got that light pink in there. You can wipe off your brush and just start pulling some white down from that light pink. All right, the top layer of that tulip is finished. We'll come back and do the black later. That needs to dry. I'm gonna start working on some of my pinks. All right, I'm gonna start with this upper left tulip here. And this inside here has got the darkest um, of my pinks. So what I'm gonna do is pull a little pink over and I'm gonna mix red into this pink. I wanna make this nice and deep dark. Shade of pink there. So I've used quite a bit of red, probably four parts red to one part of that pink, okay? I've got a nice mixture. I'm going to get that off my brush. I'm going to go into my pink. And just like we did with these black ones, what I'm going to do is fill this in with my base color, which is pink this time instead of black. Wipe my brush off, and then I can go into this pink-red mixture and just kind of go pretty heavy into that and pull that in here. Kind of let that mix right there on the tulip. You can even in the brightest parts just go straight red. Right, I'm gonna wipe off my brush. Now the next part here, um, we've got a lot of white going on. So I'm gonna go back into this really light pink that I mixed up, this almost white pink. I'm gonna use that as my base layer. Now down at the bottom, we've got some shadowing. So I'm gonna pick up just the tiniest bit of black and pull that up at the bottom of my tulip there. A lot of that is shown in this side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swipe that in while I've got it there. And then come in and finish with the light pink color at the top. And in this tulip, some of this bright reddish pink kind of pops in here. So I'm going to dip into that color and just have a play with it. I'm going to just smear it in there. Never hesitate to look at your tulip and make changes, you know, adjust it a little bit however you want.
we're playing with a lot of these same colors over here. So I'm going to dive right into it. So um, this little swoopy thing over to the side, just dipping right into this dark pink mixture. And that just gets a little, little petal right there. Just going to go ahead and throw that out. This petal here has got a lot of this dark pink, this reddish pink around the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Fill this inside with this deep pink because that is the base of that over there. Wipe it off. And then go back into my white pink mixture. And I'm not using straight white because we'll come back with straight white and that's really where we're going to add that um, pop. We want to save the pure white for the pop of color. So just come back in the middle of that tulip with that bright pink and be done with that. Now over here we've got the light pink again, the pink and the white on the left. So I'm going to come in here with that as my base layer. And then this has got some darker pink on the outside and white closer to the inside of that petal. Again, just add some in there. And whichever kind of brush strokes feel right, feel tulipy to you, go ahead and put that in there, okay? Now here in the inside, we've got some layers of petals and a lot of this I'm just going to let naturally happen. I'm just going to kind of swish some paint in there. I'm going to leave that be. We can add details later. All right, I'm going to wash off my brush because we're going to go back to some black paint. All right, so this guy for me, mostly dry. I'm gonna go into the black. I'm gonna follow the shape of the petals and just pull some black downward. So here in this front petal, we've just got kind of this fun bottom layer that reaches you know, it's almost like the black is reaching upward. So I put that layer of black, dip into some white, blend that in. Again, not being super blendy, allowing those brush strokes to poke through. And then just kind of moving on to fill the rest of this tulip with that. So just follow the shape of the, the tulip. Pull in some white for highlight and variation. And that's all we do for that. All right, we've got the main part of our tulip flowers finished. So the way the rest of the painting is going to go for me, we're going to add in some color on the stems and the leaves, and then we can add finishing touches on those flowers. So what I want to mix up is my phthalo green with about an equal part of my yellow. And that's going to make kind of a a limey green, a grass green of sorts. And that's going to be my base for a lot of this greenery. So you do kind of need a lot of it. So I'm going to go ahead and just mix up enough 
this probably won't even be enough but I did not leave a lot of room on my palette uh, and what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to start each petal with this grass green it's a nice bright color I'm going to put this on here, starting with this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of have a play. So just like I did with the other parts of the flower, I'm just going to mix some phthalo green in there and change up that petal. And I'm just going to keep working like this. I don't even need to clean off my brush. So now I've got the phthalo green and the yellow green on my brush. I'm just going to move right next door to this petal. And then when my brush kind of runs out of paint, I can just pick up some more of whichever green I want to go. So this time I did grass green on one side, kind of that phthalo on the other. Just add variation to your petals, however you want to. Petals, I'm calling them petals, they're leaves. All right. So for this big leaf here, I'm going to come in with my grass green. And this time for variation, I'm going to add in some white. So for shadow, you add in phthalo green to this grass green base. And for highlight, you add in white. Or you could add in yellow. I'm going to add in a little white. So I want this part up top to just be a little lighter. So just blending that in there. Have fun with this. There's no right or wrong. And I'm just going to move along. I'm going to do the leaves first and then switch to the stems. I'm going to skip this one. I think I want this one darker. I'm going to start that one with phthalo. So right here, I'm going to do this one with my grass green. So on this guy for highlight, I did white. This time I'm going to do yellow. This petal wants a little, or this leaf wants a little yellow. So I'm just throwing it on there. All right. And then this last one, I'm just going to do grassy green there. Smush a little phthalo on side of it. All right, this one here, I mentioned I want this one darker. So I'm going to cover this one with a phthalo. And then maybe in some parts, just adding a little white to that phthalo. That's going to, phthalo is a blue-green color. So it is going to give it more of that blue-green look. And then if you want to, maybe you can add a little bit of that grass green kind of in the middle at the bottom. So there's lots of ways you can create variation with green. Green and white, green and yellow. Phthalo and grass green, just have a play. Really all we're going for here is just variation in all honesty, okay? All right, I'm gonna switch to a smaller, my smallest little flat brush here. Oops, that one needs a little love, but still gonna use it. All right, 
Still going to start with my half phthalo, half yellow mixture. So I'm, I'm not mixing a new color, just need more of the same. And I'm going to do the same thing with the stems. So the first step is just filling in the space, covering up any tracer lines if you have those. And then adding areas of shadow with different greens and highlights with different greens and white and all those fun colors. I got my green in there. Now I'm kind of coming in with some white just to change it. Put the look at them. All right, now I've laid down a base color for all my stems. Uh, we've got some good looking petals on the flowers, and this is where we can kind of have some fun. Um, 
So look at the colors you've got on your palette and don't be afraid to really just kind of funk it up. So um, you really can just have a play. Um, grab some of this green and just the phthalo and just kind of pull some large sections down here into your greenery. Remember, we want to see lots of brush strokes in this painting. Don't be afraid of brush strokes. A lot of people feel like, oh, if we're going realistic, if we're making a painting, we really want to blend everything and have it be, you know, very subtle. Sometimes these big brush strokes can be fun. I'm uh, adding a little black to my phthalo and just maybe in some parts adding little kind of hints of a, a shadow or a wrinkle in there. I like to go fast because I don't like to overthink this part. I really just want this to feel um, spontaneous. I went a little dark with the black here, but I still want that to be kind of phthalo y. Do not be afraid of, of color. Do not be afraid to just play. The more playful you are with your paintings, the more fun it'll be to create, obviously. Um, but the more that fun will be kind of translated into your painting. So don't be scared of it. I'm going to dip into some white. Remember I said white is going to be our brightest highlight. So up here, I do have white in this tulip right kind of in the middle. So I'm going to smear some in there. More white on that petal. little bit of white up in there. So this white acts as my brightest part. So this petal's got lots of white, gonna add that in there. From here on out, it's just a lot of finishing touches. So just go in and play. Make sure that your lines are hidden. You know, areas that you've got bright color, go in and brighten those up with just another layer of the exact same color. So your finishing touches are going to be very different from mine, but I'm going to come through on some of my petals and you know, just kind of make sure that I'm hiding some of those outlines, maybe adding some highlighting things to some of these petals that I just feel like aren't 
standing out real well. Just kind of having a play with it. And then the last thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this off camera, is paint my edges. And I'm probably, I've got a lot of pink left. I'm probably just going to do pink on all four sides. Um, sign your painting. Claim it as your own. And then the last thing I want to encourage you to do is share with others. I would love it if you would share with me. Um, you can share in my Facebook group. It's free to join. The address is right here, or you can just search for it on Facebook. We would absolutely love to cheer you on. The other way that you can share is by tagging me at Paint Rinse Repeat or hashtag Paint Rinse Repeat, and that'll notify me on social media and it'll also share it to all of your friends so that they can cheer you on. That is a fantastic thing. So I would love it if you would share your work. And then I always give out a shout out to my supporters. Thank you so much for being creative with me. Uh, my supporters get each and every online class that I offer for only $9.99 a month. It's a huge value. Um, you can pick and choose from all the paintings that you like, or you can participate in everything. So check that out, address below. And then for all of you that participated with me, thank you so much. Hopefully we'll get some spring blossoms blooming uh, out in the world soon here in Cincinnati. It's still kind of cold, but I've got my fingers crossed that spring is coming. Thank you everybody for joining me for Licorice Tulips and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.